they don't find the site. Okay. And, and if you get used to that elevator ride presentation, often that trigger gets pressed regardless of whether you're aiming the gun or not. And you start aiming the gun much later in the process. Does that make sense? You're not getting used to physically aiming the gun. The interesting thing that I find is that uh, competitive shooters, if you will, that are big advocates of the escalator ride, if, if, if that piece, um, for everything else they do, it's about getting the gun up high and driving it onto the target. So for the draw, they're all like, oh man, just breach, you just bring it straight up. And then for everything else, they're moving, setting up, get the gun up high and you drive it into the target as you set up. And I'm like, so why can't you do that when you draw the gun? Right? What? I mean, we, for everything else, it's fun. And then we get to the draw and he goes, oh no, you just lift it up. Escalator ride, okay? Um, I find it very important with the traditional double action gun, uh, especially for people that are struggling with that DA shot. Uh, because if they wait, they see the site, they confirm the site's where they need to be, and then they try to hammer that double action, it normally doesn't go real well for them, okay? And I know, so there's some guys that argue against that. Um, what I have found is if you take a lot of these guys that say that they don't put their finger on the trigger, or they don't press the trigger till the very, very end, and then you put them on, you watch them on film, guess what they did? Their finger's on the trigger like here, okay? Even with 1911. All right, they're getting their finger on there really early. So to tell you don't do this, wait till you confirm sites and then press the trigger, I would be lying to you about what you're really gonna do. And I'm not doing you a service and I'm not getting you the ability to train to do it correctly the way you're gonna do it. Uh, the other thing about getting the gun up and pressing it out, it eliminates the uh, a lot of the situational or environmental issues that you potentially run into. Okay, so if I get used to just bringing my gun straight up all the time and that is my built-in muscle memory, if there's anything in front of me right here, which could be, that's where the gun goes. It goes banging into this thing. And get, getting used to getting that gun up and driving it out to the target eliminates the issues of dealing with the environmental problems that you may have uh, in the environment that you're drawing and presenting the gun. Does that make sense? So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to uh, do a demonstration here. Uh, this is a very common demonstration that a lot of people do. Uh, it's smooth as fast. I mean, we're playing the... Uh, a little bit of a game here. Who has not used an electronic timer before? Anybody? Yes, no, maybe. You have not used one of these before? I'm surprised because you shoot like you, you shoot really well. But you don't normally see that. So basically what this is, is I press a button, I get a delay beep. That tells me to go. When I fire the gun, it records the blast from the gun. It tells me how long it took to take the shot. Now these devices are tremendous because they're, they're, I call them two things, they're my electronic stress inducer, okay, and it's also my electronic lie detector, okay, because I, all the time, I, to this day, I still see shit on the internet about, oh, I can do this, and I do this this fast, and I do this level of accuracy, and I'm like, shit, show me that, come here, <laughs> and they're like, well, you know, this one time, I, you know, it's like, yeah, yeah. yeah. and you know, I've done all kinds of things once, right? So what it this does is it has is, been a tremendous tool to find out what is really fast. Not what looks fast, not what feels fast, but it tells the truth about what is actually happening. When I do this demonstration, you need to watch what I'm doing with the gun and not look at the target. If you look at the target and watch holes appear, there is absolutely nothing to be learned from that. Okay, you can look at the target after I shot, but if you're looking at the target when I fire the shot, all you're seeing is a hole appear in the target. Okay, so pay attention to what I'm doing here is important. This is a hard one for me to do because I'm going to try to do it incorrectly a couple of times, and then I try to do it correctly. And then doing it incorrectly and then doing it correctly is pretty difficult. And I don't want to overemphasize the incorrect part. Um, so I'm still trying to go, you know, quasi fast, if you will. Uh, and it's, sometimes it's hard. My brain gets, you know, the wrong signal, and I do it correctly. And I'm like, damn it. Okay. So, eyes and ears. All right. Range is going hot. Okay. So one shot. I'm going to do it incorrectly the first couple of times. We'll see what the time is, and then I'll do it correctly. The goal is. To, well, you'll see here in a second. So I'm going to try to move the gun quickly, find the sight, and then press the trigger at three separate motions. Okay? 
failed in 85. Or the 92. But, and that exact last one was exactly my fear of what happened. If you sling the gun out there so fast, and the gun's still doing this, then you've got this anxiety in your head, I gotta shoot, I gotta shoot, I gotta shoot. And you pull the trigger even though the sights aren't where they're supposed to be. So now I'm gonna do it correctly, okay? Let's put this one on the timer. Now watch what I'm doing with the gun. How fast is that one? Point six. Did it look faster or slower? It looks slower. It looks slower, right? It was 83. I'm not trying to go. The point of this is, this is not what ends up making me fast. This is what makes me fast. Okay? I can snatch the gun out there really, really fast, but if the gun's not where it needs to be and I'm readjusting and then I press the trigger, I've got reaction time built into the movement already. So I gotta move the gun out there. It's there. Bang. I just lost a quarter second. I can take that time, aim the gun, and break the shot there at the end. Way more consistent, way more likely to hit that first shot. And what I'm training myself to do is present that gun and aim that gun at the same time. The concept being is, let's say you're in such a stressful situation that you don't aim the gun, okay? You're point shooting, which is quite possible. Anybody ever done force on force and been like, oh, yeah, I didn't really see the sights, right? But guess what you're now learning how to do? You're learning how to drive and aim that gun. You're going to end up being a much more consistent, much more effective shooter in that draw stroke versus trying to just do the index draw. Wait to see what you need to see and then press the, sight, the trigger. Does that make sense? Okay. So we move the gun. We feel the alignment of the gun. We see the sights come in alignment. And then we break the shot there at the end.